Recently, if you couldn't tell, I've been watching and reading a lot of new manga and anime, specifically from Shonen Jump. Some of these series have been Chainsaw Man, One Piece, Demon Slayer, Jojo's Bizarre Adventure, and our main talking point today, Assassination Classroom. Now, there were a lot of ways I could have gone when talking about the series. Originally, I wanted to structure a video on Kuro Sensei and how he breaks the mold of the typical shonen antagonist. For one, he's not only the main obstacle that the main characters must face and overcome, but he is also someone that guides them in that direction. However, I decided to save that for another time and talk about how Assassination Classroom not only tricks its cast, but also tricks its audience into a false sense of security and by doing so, subverting our expectations. Let me word that a little bit better. It's a bit disingenuous to say that Assassination Classroom tricks its audience because that couldn't be further from from the truth. A better word would be misdirects our expectations. This series tells us what's going to happen at the very beginning, and it makes no attempt to change that narrative until three episodes before its finale. Our protagonists of E-Class have two goals. One, make their way back to normal classes and become normal citizens in society. And two, prevent the destruction of the planet by killing their teacher. These two goals go hand in hand, and goal one cannot be achieved if goal two is failed. Naturally, being a shonen series, we can surmise that our heroes will win. No matter what happens, they will survive, and our antagonist will be defeated. Throughout the series, we learn so much about Kuro Sensei. He's not some evil alien whose sole purpose is to destroy the world. He's actually a very nice and caring teacher, who on multiple occasions is willing to put his life on the line for his students. Throughout the 47 episode run, we the audience also become his students. We watch him and our fellow E-Class members grow, and everyone cannot help but get attached. We are misdirected from the fact that he has to be killed, despite the students trying to do so every episode, which in itself is brilliant writing, the likes I've never seen before. That's not to say that this is the first time it's been done in media, of course not, but it's the first show that I've seen it done in, to my knowledge. E-Class, as the series goes on, become a family, and Koro Sensei, along with various other teachers in Arena and Karasuma, their parents. They've gone through so much life-changing moments that, as I said before, we forget that this yellow octopus is going to die when the series reaches its climax. This fact truly hits home after Koro Sensei reveals his origin to the class, shedding new light on events that we had been exposed to during the battle with Kayano. Koro Sensei was originally human, and after being experimented on, the antimatter in his newfound body was set to detonate exactly one year from the time he fully transformed. He had no say in the matter. It was a fate that could not be changed, as far as we knew. That did not stop Nagisa from trying to change that fact. That leads us to episode 3. 39 and 40. Nagisa's plan to find a way to save Kuro Sensei's life leaves the class divided. Students who want Kuro Sensei to continue living, and those who feel like it would be a disrespect to go against everything he trained them to do up until this point. With the heated battle coming to a head, Nagisa winning due to karma giving up, the plan to save Kuro Sensei is now set in motion as we breathe a sigh of relief. With the plan to save Kuro Sensei officially in place, Nagisa and Karma are sent to space to retrieve data that would aid in set mission. The two are successful in this endeavor as the plot continues down what we believe to be its end-all be-all. But wait, there's a few episodes left. Nothing to worry about. We need to have some kind of final conflict, a climax, and an epilogue. We do get all of these things, but not in the way the series would like you to believe. With eight days left until Koro Sensei's assassination, or rather in this case, eight days left to save him, everything is going well. That is until Karasuma informs the superiors of Kuro Sensei's location. Try as they may, their first attack is dodged. However, they go with a plan B, trapping Koro Sensei in a barrier that he cannot leave. With that, they charge up their attack. 
At this point, the series has brilliantly pulled the rug from beneath us. I'd even go as far as to say it emotionally manipulated us, and I don't mean that in a bad way. It successfully sets up a plot thread and made it entirely pointless. Again, it sounds like I'm criticizing it, but that couldn't be further from the truth. Realistically speaking, the government would never allow Kuro-sensei to be free. They're not taking any chances, and rightfully so. The fate of the entire planet is at stake here, and at this point, Kuro-sensei's identity has been leaked to the public, and public opinion has swayed against him. So no matter what E-Class could possibly do, the chances of Kuro-sensei living a normal, peaceful life has already been vetoed, at least when it comes to Japan. With no other answers in order to stop Kuro Sensei's death, Nagisa and E Class once again are forced with only one option the option that prompted the start of this journey. They had to take Kuro Sensei's life, and boy, was it hard to watch. Assassination Classroom, as I said before, successfully pulled the rug from underneath me during this moment. I had been praying, hoping that Koro Sensei would be saved as we reached our climax, and the series had led me to believe this idea episodes prior. I was successfully misdirected. The opening wasn't shy of what was going to happen as well, and yet I was in so much denial that I actively ignored the warning. It only hit me after the fact. Seeing the opening again without Kuro Sensei legitimately choked me up. While Assassination Classroom as a whole isn't the most complex shonen in terms of writing, and frankly, not all shonen need to be, Yusei Matsuri, I believe, is greatly underappreciated. This moment here alone shows how strong his writing is. I was in tears despite the fact that it should have been clear as day to where this series was headed. Saving Kuro Sensei, for a lack of better words, would have been a very cliche ending, and while it would have been an ending most would enjoy, I'm happy Yusei Sensei didn't go along with it. All in all, Assassination Classroom was a fun watch. If you've seen the series, please let me know what you thought about it in the comments below, especially that ending. Next time you see me though, hopefully I'm talking about either JoJo's Bizarre Adventure or Demon Slayer once again. This is Grim Toki, this has been Beyond Animation, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.